Hey everyone, welcome back to Painted Studio. It is Friday in the third week of July. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it's actually, actually we're the fourth week of July. Holy guacamole, I'm looking at the calendar over here to tell me what date it is because I can't remember anymore. And somehow this is our fourth Friday in July uh, and I'm kind of stunned. Hey Carrie, nice to see you here. All right, today's free finish is something that was inspired by the brand new stencils that came in today. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to announce the contest winners, but I think I'm gonna wait until we get through at least one step of this finish to give people a chance to come on to see what's going on. So, and of course, since I have no memory, if I forget, somebody start yelling on here before I go on to the next step. Now now it's the winner, because I will forget. I, I'm putting it out there, I forget. All right, so we're gonna aim at the easel. We're at a slightly different angle today. I am uh, shifting stuff around the studio, so <laughs> every time I do that, I put the easel in a different place. All right, so we're starting out with a sample board, and on that board we have, where is the color? I had it right here to show you all. I probably put it away because I was being efficient. It is luster stone, I'm sorry, set coat, faux effect set coat in metallic bright blue. And um, it's on a, just on a piece of polystyrene. And this is the smallest one we're gonna work on today because I just sort of had a bunch of boards that were all like clean and I could put the same color paint. So I just painted all different ones. All right, so the first thing we're going to do on here is we have luster stone in and I don't, I don't know if everybody realizes this i'm a sub distributor for faux design studio uh up here in addison illinois and so i do carry faux effects products so even the faux effects products that you see here i carry and if i'm not looking at the cameras because i'm unboxing stuff or opening up stuff so we have three different colors that we're working with right now we have faux effects Luster Stone in Peacock Blue, which is gorgeous. Cobalt Blue Luster Stone. You want my earrings? <laughs> Thanks, Carrie. You can't have them. You have to go to St. Thomas, or I'll take you to St. You can take me to St. Thomas and I'll show you where I got them. How about that? And we're going to use our Azure Blue. All right, uh, we're gonna take a trowel and this finish does actually require a, a trowel of some sort. I don't care if it's a Bondo scraper, I don't care if it's a trowel like this, I don't care if it's plaster, you know, a drywalling trowel, you need a trowel for this. And the first thing you're gonna do is put some peacock blue on your, your trowel, and then you're also gonna put on some cobalt blue. And if you look at these two colors together, they're very, very, very close. The cobalt is just a little deeper than the peacock. It'll show more distinctly on the board. And I'm doing snaky movements um, This board just happens to have a little texture because that's what it is, but that's not important. And I'm using snaky serpentine movements because this finish is going to mimic water. Uh, because why dragonflies like where there's water? So we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna take uh, another stick. And I've got, so you can see I've got the peacock blue and the cobalt blue troweled on. I'm going to take just a little, and I that's called double troweling, so I double loaded the trowel with two colors, and then um, I troweled both colors on at the same time, letting them blend as I troweled. Not muddy, blend. You want to see both colors. All right, so this is the azure, and I'm just sort of dropping it in in a few spots. And let me scrape the rest off of here because I don't need all of that on here. I need it, I'll go back. And I'm moving, again, in sort of serpentine motions because I want to give the impression of water. And I don't want to see skip marks 
I don't want to see big, huge, solid chunks of color. I want waves. I want motion. If I blend it out too much and it disappears, I can come back in with a little more product. If you see a little bit of the undercolor peek through, that's not a big deal. Let me scrape that off because I got that really muddy in that corner. So I want to put a little bit of azure in there. And again, this alone, beautiful finish for a wall. Lovely, simple finish. All right, we're gonna put this one to the side. Um, and I know you're like, why did you put all that big tape around there? Well, it's because my next two boards are bigger and I know I tend to trowel past the edge of the board all the time. So yeah, I did it right there. And I wanna keep as little, oops, I didn't mean to pull that tape. Oh well, that's the edge tape. Uh, my other two boards are substantially bigger, so I was trying not to have them get coated with luster stone on the backs of them. Okay, we'll set this one aside to dry and throw these tapes out. Sorry, just can't handle big wads of tape floating around today. Okay, and when you're doing this on a wall, Make sure to keep a rag around so you can clean the edge of the trowel. And if you look at my trowel, even when I dropped it on stuff, which I just did, this side is clean. This side has product on it. You only want product on the side of the trowel that you're hitting your surface with. Do not put it in the middle. You will get a good result. All right, so I'm going to pull up the next board. And here we go. This is what this is going to look like dry. Let me find my roll of tape my monster roll of tape. Uh, mind you, when I don't have an audience, I'm way care more careful when I put things on the ease, so I'm way more careful how I put things down around the studio. But when we're doing lives, I'm trying for speed and efficiency which, you know, I don't always get, but that's what I'm trying for. All right, let me put a lid back on some of these things so I can move them out of the way to get to the next product. One more lid to go on and then we're done. With that, we're done with that, not done, done. I'm trying to be a little tidier as I do things because you all have seen me throw things literally across the room. So I'm trying to be better about that. All right, so we are next thing we're going to do is take our Artsyville gel medium. Where in the world did you get a, <laughs> oh, um, that was actually, it's about a third of the size now. Um, my husband's company makes used to make, uh, the company they used to own made tape and drape products. So there was always huge rolls of tape around the warehouse. Uh, they're not sold publicly. I was trying to get them for the studio. They won't do it. No matter how nicely I ask, I guess, you know, I'm just not as cute as I thought I was. All right, so we're going to take primary elements in Beach House Blue. This, These are not the same as the pigments we used yesterday, which have are, are designed for resin. Uh, this is designed for, not yesterday, we used them, what, Tuesday? These are de designed for water-based products, and this one is called Blue Flame. And then there's one I'm using today we don't have in stock. If you all like it, let me know, I'll bring it in. This one is called Key Lime. I just happen to have a small sample jar of it. All right, so you're gonna take your trowel again. Geez, I, this is this is why I was cleaning up, and this is how it's not successful because I clean up, and then I set my clean trowel right down in the one spot that I dropped a whole bunch of stuff because I'm a genius. All right, so I mixed, I pre-mixed these because the next board is already previously set up for this step. I mix the blue flame, beach house blue and key lime all into different con containers of gel medium. Um, and 
I want to say I used about a quarter of a teaspoon to a half a teaspoon per ounce because I wanted my color rich. And when you use powder pigments in anything that's not completely liquid, and even then you're gonna to need to do it, you have to mix the pigments in and then let them bloom a little, meaning that the pigments need to absorb the moisture. So when you come back after you walked away from it for like 10 minutes, you'll see that you'll have deep spots of color in it. That means the rest of the pigment granules have absorbed moisture and started to bloom out into the product and you need to come back and stir it up. And I think, I don't know if I've stirred these so well you don't see any blooms. There we go. Oh, sorry, almost dropped the stick down my chest. All right, you can see right on the edge in here that there's little spots of pigment. So that's what we have to come back and stir up because that's where the moisture has gotten into the pigment and caused it to bloom. All right, so now we're going to take a little bit of the Beach House Blue a little bit of the blue flame. Again, double troweled, double loaded on the trowel, and we're gonna move it back snugly in zigzag motions across this, because now we're starting to really get it looking watery. And as I'm doing this, you're gonna hear me scraping and the scraping actually burnishes the luster stone underneath this as I'm doing it. So you're getting a little extra sheen out of it. So between the sheen of these pigments, the glossiness of the texture of the gel medium, and then the burnishing that we're doing, um, you're gonna get a lovely sheen out of this. And again, at this stage, even just with these two colors, it's a beautiful finish. I mean, gorgeous. Think of this in a powder room or on a tabletop. I mean, this beautiful watery feel to this. And now I got to clean the residual off of my trowel. And we're going to go in with our uh, Key West. Or, I'm sorry, Key Lime Key West. Key Lime Green. I'm making up stuff now. I have way too much on there. Okay, so I'm only taking a little tiny bit of green. And I'm just tightly bringing it over. It just adds a little different dimension. Now, if you don't like this green, don't use it. If you don't like these colors, try the finish in another color palette. All right. So look how, I mean, again, beautiful, watercolory, very soft very romantic and then it's going to dry like a little bit of heaven hold that up for you all to see look how pretty that is uh what kind of paper am i using uh, this is actually polystyrene it's not paper we use the decorative finishing industry in the u.s we have used polystyrene boards to make samples because they take well and they're flexible so we can uh, do a lot of stuff with them. And I do carry them. So you, if you look under paintable surfaces at paintedstudio.com, you will see polystyrene boards. And they are excellent for making samples. Um, you can cut them in half. I mean, sometimes I do much smaller samples. I just, these are boards that I have been using to make other finishes. Um, and so I always sort of have a stack of boards that have been primed and ready to go sitting around the studio. And if I don't, then I go in and I roll out a bunch and stick them on the shelf. All right, let's get this on here. I see somebody's asking me a question. I can't see what it is though. Uh, oh, thanks, Carrie. Yeah, that key lime is lovely. Now, I'm gonna zoom in on this for a second. If I can get it any closer. I'm gonna have to forgive me for the wavering. Okay, if you, I'm not doing a very good job of this. If you look right in here, you will see that I have a little texture. I used a chip brush and just ran it through this to get a little bit. What I was trying to mimic is one corner having what looked like ripples happening. So that was really what I was doing. Sorry, I'm gonna get me out of the zoom in because that's not, it's, it's making me a little nauseous to watch it so I can only imagine what it's like for you all. 
Okay, the colors are gorgeous. All right, I've gone through two stages. We have enough people here. Whoever's not here, I will announce the name anyway. We're going to do a drawing. Now, I put everybody's name in here. We got to 44 shares. Thank you, everybody. Sprinkling the love. The bigger the sprinkles, the more I'm able to do contests like this. All right, so I'm stirring these up. Want you, anybody you think I'm doing something and I'm holding this box over my head. I can't see anything. I don't know who I'm getting. Some people entered like 10 times. Some people entered one. I have no idea. I'm just kind of reaching in here and I'm going to pull a name. Jenny Clark. Jenny Clark, you are the winner. I know that's backwards, but that's who the winner is. Jenny Clark. So Jenny, you entered. Honestly, I think Jenny entered half of the 20, the 44 shares because her name was in there a lot. And thank you so much for the shares. That is awesome. I really appreciate it. And I will also send you a private message and ask, get your address and your roller choice so I can send you your prize, preferably tomorrow. If not, it'll go out next week. All right, so we're back to the board. We have our winner. Yay, everybody. I'm so, ah, Jenny, you're there. You saw you won. Yay, you're there. Okay, so Jenny, when we're done with the live, go on to our website, paintedstudio.com, go into the rollers and pick out whichever of the orange stamping rollers you want. Not the blue ones, the orange ones, because that's what'll work with the mediums that I'm sending you. We're gonna finish this up and I'm gonna say good night because I have my nephew still visiting and he misses his, misses his Auntie Mo. All right, so we are going to use on this final step, we're gonna use this gorgeous new dragonfly stencil that I just got in today. This is made by Go Designs Two Chatty Chicks. We are carrying these. I am so proud to be supporting such a talented artist like Renee. And we're gonna stick our little dragonfly down there and I'm gonna shift the camera angle so you can see what I'm gonna do. Now. Normally I'd put it up here, but I put that little bit of ripple down there. So I don't want to put this right up on top of that with all the interest being here. Part of that is placement. I did a very, very light spray of um, just Elmer's spray glue on the back of this and then threw it to the side half an hour ago. And as you can see, it sticks just perfectly. This does not guarantee that you won't have bleeds, but what this does by putting the spray adhesive on it means that it stays in place and doesn't shift, which reduces the bleeding. If you, all right, so the next thing we're gonna do is to put the stencil in, we're gonna take our Artsyville gel medium again, and I'm gonna kinda lean in because I got so much stuff in the way, it's a little hard for me to stay in the camera. I can move things out so I can kind of Come where you're seeing me. Get all of the goopy stuff moved. Ah. And if I put it on the other side and mixed, you'd be looking at my back. That's just how it goes. I just need a little bit of this in here because all I need to do is get it, that area filled in. So I'm taking just a, a tablespoon or two in here. Um, and when I do this sort of thing on a job or for a client's piece, I have all of my colors in the amounts I need pre-mixed ahead of time and set aside because I don't want to waste my time on a job site uh, screwing around with figuring out what I need. All right, so the color I'm going to add into this is called Sunflower. And it comes out as a nice warm yellow. You're noticing I'm not adding a whole lot of pigment why? Because dragonflies have some translucency to them, so I don't want this to be super opaque, but I'm also going to have a little fun with it because we're going to add a little bit of glitter because dragonflies shimmer in the sun. So this is our soft gold glitter. Let's get a stick, stir it all up. Now, 
if this were on a piece, I would have mixed this and tested it to make sure it's exactly as the, the right level of translucency and the right level of glitter. We're doing this live on a camera, so what I do is what you get. Hell, what I do is what I get. And just understand, this is very opaque looking. Once this clears, you'll be able to tell how subtle and shimmery and lovely it is. Uh, what's the problem I'm stenciling, product I'm stenciling with? You're using the Artsyville Gel Medium, and then I added some soft gold glitter and sun, uh, sunflower yellow pigment to this to make me a dragonfly color. And really, the color of my dragonfly is being determined by the color of the background. I need it to be a little lighter so it pops against this, but I want it to be subtly lighter, meaning that's why there's very light pigment in here. And I'm taking my, we carry these little tiny Japanese trowels. They're great for furniture. They're super easy to work with. And they're so nice with these little stencils. And see there is where I'm gonna have a bleed. I accidentally let my trowel catch up on my stencil. Even I make those mistakes. Everybody does it. Doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. We still make mistakes. Oh well. It'll be fine. So this beautiful stencil. Let's hope I didn't screw up that release too much up over there. Oh, I didn't. Actually, I got real lucky. That bleed was so small. But look how beautiful that looks. Now that's going to turn clearer. And it's just going to have a slight shimmery kind of goldy look and it's going to be um, a perfect accent for this. So, look how beautiful that came out. Tomorrow I will post the pictures of it with it all dried and cleared and with all the tapes pulled because nothing looks good with the tape still on it. We all know that, look how much nicer it already looks with one side of the tape pulled off. And we just have, it's just this beautiful watery finish. All right, I'm gonna stick that over there to dry. Aw, oh, thanks, Carrie. All right. I'm standing in front of the air conditioner right now because it suddenly got really hot in here and suddenly meaning I am having a hot flash. Sorry for any guys who might catch this. I'm 56, it's what we deal with. All right, so. Everything's perfectly came out the way I wanted it to. You guys, we had the contest announcement. I'm so excited for Jenny. Thank you very much. And we will do another contest at the, but I think I'm gonna do a Labor Day contest. Um, and I'm gonna figure out what we're gonna do for it. But I got a couple weeks. Uh, what's the largest size of that gel medium that I sell? I sell it only, the largest is the quart. Uh, it is, only to those of us who are teaching with it in studios, are we're allowed to carry the gallons. Um, it's simply the regulations of bringing it in. So the quarts are the biggest size that it sells in, not just by me, but by anybody who carries Artsyville, that's the biggest size we're allowed to vend. All right, everybody, um, have I forgotten anything? Well, of course, sprinkle the love on this video because it's awesome. And I hope you all have a great Friday night. I'm gonna clean up this mess and spend some time with my family. Thank you all. Carrie, if you have any more questions, sweetie, don't, I'm, I'm, when I get off, just call me. Don't hesitate ever to call me, and that goes for everybody watching. Our phone number's posted on our website, our phone number's posted on our page here. If you have product questions, message me, call me, send me a text. I'm always happy to help. I mean, I was helping, I don't remember who I was helping, but I was helping somebody at one o'clock in the morning the other night. So because I don't sleep <laughs> on top of it I never sleep so um seriously don't hesitate to reach out all right everybody I'm so grateful you were here thank you for all the love thank you for all the sprinkles hey Manetta gonna have to roll back because we're done for the night have a good one bye